Hello and welcome to Cracked Open, a podcast guiding you on your journey to becoming a vessel of unconditional love. And this is your host, Beck Mylonis, High Priestess, Channel, and Activator. Join me on this series as I share reflections, insights, and channel transmissions from my journey of walking the initiation path. Each episode is a unique transmission containing supportive frequencies to facilitate the deepest healing, activation, and reconnection with your soul. I invite you to open your mind and set the intention to receive this episode into your heart space. Let's go. Welcome back, beautiful souls, to another episode of Cracked Open a podcast guiding you to becoming a vessel of unconditional love. Today is going to be a really big transmission. I can feel it already. It's going to be a bit of an activation for some of you. Um, Some things that you may already be familiar with on a deep soul level, um, but are yet to really integrate fully into your life. So today I'm sharing the wild ass Indiana Jones like adventure that I am on out here in Mexico at the moment in South America as well, where I'll be heading. And the hope is to inspire you to lead a life which is 100% led by mystery, leaning into the mystery, leaning into the unknown, leaning into intuition to guide you every step of the way. Because what I want to say today is that when we have a soul mission, right, we have a mission that is bigger than just us coming here and having a good time. That is part of our mission as well. But I want to say when we have a soul calling, a purpose, a mission, it is imperative, imperative. It is number one for us to be able to trust our intuition. I'm going to share my story, guys. I'm going to share some of the wild as fucking things that I've had to go through and experience in order to become this clear channel who lives my life 100% guided by my intuition. It's going to sound a bit self-obsessed because I will be using myself as an example to share some direct stories and teachings from my life. Um, So bear with me. It's not because I'm obsessed with myself. I'm just showing you from my own life in the embodiment of what this actually looks like um, and what it opens up for you. That it's imperative that we are tapped in, right? We're tapped into our internal wisdom. We're tapped into our source. We're tapped into the flow of life because that flow of life is going to guide us to exactly where we are required to be, right? And that flow of life knows better than we know the steps to get there. So at the moment, full disclosure, I am living on a very day-to-day basis, right? Two years ago, this would have stressed me the fuck out. I don't have a plan. (laughs) I do not have a plan. And I am on this grid work mission out here, which... I didn't even realize the enormity of it until I landed here because it's almost like I think I would have sabotaged myself and not come if I had have known the enormity of it. And it's also not magical. When you know everything at the start, you know all the details, you know all the steps, it actually prevents magic and miracles from showing up from those times where everything aligns so perfectly that you're like, holy fuck, how did that just happen? Like, how did that just align, right? It's the miracles. It's that when you lean into the mystery, you trust your intuition and then you have this magical payoff of like, holy crap, that's incredible, right? If we know all the steps, we're going to miss that. I'm, I completely sidetracked from what I was saying, but I don't have a plan, right? So I got here knowing I had to come here, heard the call to come here. It was very strong. I've had this call for a while. I finally trusted it. I got myself here. And it has literally just been this following the breadcrumbs since I arrived here. And as I said, two years ago, it would be extremely stressful for me to not know what I'm doing next week, to not know what booking I need to make for my you know, accommodation, what flight I need to catch, where I got to be when someone's asking me, where are you going to be in December? I'm like, I don't fucking know where I'm going to be Tuesday next week. Like, <laughs> I don't know, right? But that is required of me in this moment, because what I'm seeing is this mission that I'm on. I'm not going to get into details. I'm going to talk a bit about it at the end, because this is also in this episode, an invitation. Whoa, my whole fucking body. Wow. For you will be feeling this if this is you is all I want to say for some of you to join me, um, because this is a shared mission, right? I'm going to it's so like, well, I don't even like good work is so sacred, right? So I 
don't like talking about the details of what I'm doing because it's not really anyone's fucking business firstly. And secondly, it's something that is so in the realm of mystery. It's so in the realm of the unseen that trying to explain it in human words just falls short. So you will feel this. You will feel the enormity of what it is that this mission is. And if you're a part of it, you will know right now, you probably wouldn't even need to hear me going on the spiel at the end, but you will know is all I'm going to say. You will feel that in your body because I definitely feel it. It's very strong, but Anyway, knew I was called here to come here for a grid work mission, but this grid work mission that I'm on, which is for those of you who don't know what grid work is, it's working with the land, working with sacred sites, working with the energies to harmonize, right? I'm learning really like from the Mayans who I'm working with a lot. And it's because I'm part of the Mayan lineage. My soul goes really back, um, back, 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 way back. It's in my codex, right? Um, I'm really learning about the harmony they had with the land, the harmony they had with the flow of everything, the flower of life, the sun, the moon, the planets, and how they were harnessing this energy through their pyramids, through their structures, through their synotes, through their grids, through all of this. It's a really, really big, it's huge, right? But again, in the realm of mystery. So I can't tell you tangibly what that is actually going to do in the physical world or what that means. It's an energetic thing. It's felt, right? So a lot of these things in the realm of intuition, these soul missions, they are not in the physical world. So if you are trying to somehow take the downloads you're receiving, the mission that you're on, the pieces, the energies, whatever it is, and translate it into, well, this is shifted in my external as a result of this, or, oh, it makes sense because I have the clear outline of what it means. You're missing the point, right? This is what it means to play in the realm of mystery because the mystery is non-tangible. It's non-physical. I'm fucking all over the place today, guys, because it's so much energy moving through me, but I'm going to come back to what I was saying. This mission that I'm on, it is literally like I have been handed a treasure map, right? And all of the points on the map are obscured. And the next point on the map doesn't light up until I, it's like a treasure hunt, right? Until I reach the point that I need to be for that to unlock. So I have been sitting here in Tulum for a month and a half now being like, what's my next step? What's my next step? I need to know my next step. I need to know my next step. And I've done the things that I felt were required of me, but I didn't know where I was meant to be. Right. I, did, I couldn't book my accommodation, couldn't move forward. And it's like the things that have had to fall into place for me to even get to, I was at Chichen Itza on the weekend, which is a huge pyramid out here to get to that place is wild. Like I'm talking like had this download to message this person I met one time to ask them if they knew a tour guide. They happened to know a tour guide. This tour guide ended up being fucking the perfect person with all this knowledge and wisdom for me. I had my friends that I met here, by the way, through some crazy circumstances aligning. And then they were like, yeah, we feel it too. We need to go with this guy and then going with that guy. And then this thing comes in and that thing comes in. And then I go to the pyramid and then, oh, I suddenly understand what it is that I'm here to do and what the next step is. And then receiving the directives after I've received that next piece of, okay, this is where you need to go now, right? And I'm using this as an analogy for life, for our sacred missions. We will only be given the next step. It is not practical. It is not, um, it is not sustainable. It is not necessary for us to receive the whole map at once. If spirit had given me the whole map for this journey, like I said, I probably would have shit myself and been like, that's too big. I'm not doing this. Like that requires so much strength and trusting and like blah, 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 all of this stuff. I'm not doing it. And we would shut it down. Right. So if, if God, if spirit, if your higher self showed you your whole divine destiny laid out as a plan and how you're going to get there, firstly, it takes the fun out of it. Cause it's, it's actually kind of, I'm really, now that I've leaned into the, okay, I've been shown so many times in the past month and a half that chaos isn't going to happen if I let go, that things just magically fall in. So I trust. And it's really fun actually to live in the mystery of like, I have no fucking idea what I'm doing tomorrow, but I trust, right? I don't know where this is going to lead me. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what the finish point is, but I'm on this journey. And it's like this magical treasure hunt. Like I feel like I'm in this Indiana Jones movie, right? So if you could live your life like that, with that enjoyment and that mystery and that constant unfolding and the excitement um, of being this kid, like on this adventure, on this, um, like a scavenger hunt, right? Life gets to be like that. Life doesn't have to be this structured, planned, you know, thing where it's like, but up, but up, but we're just following the motions. It can be uncharted, un, um, you know, unplanned. It can be magical. It can be mis like mysterious. It can be mystical. It can be all the things. And so many of us are so not tapped into that because we're cut off from our intuition that we miss out on how magical, how aligned, how um, 
perfect it can be for us, right? So to get here, following my mission in this way, to get here following the ping, like not knowing what I'm doing the next week, but being okay to lean into the mystery because I know it's always going to work out somehow. It's always perfect. And every time you're like, oh, fuck, of course it's perfect. Of course it worked out. Of course it always does, right? We're so supported. Um, I lost my train of thought. There you go. I'm going to have a sip of tea because I lost my train of thought. We forget, right? We forget that this is what it gets to be like. This is what our soul mission gets to be like. But if we're not tapped into our intuition, if we're not receiving the messages, then we miss it, right? And this is not a, I'm not trying to freak anyone out. Like you must be quiet and meditate for 50 hours a day and not get distracted. I've gotten fucking hella distracted out here, guys, by wanting to have fun with my friends, dance, play. Um, and none of these things are bad, but it has meant that I have not been sitting in that silence that has been required of me to receive the directives, to receive the next message. So I actually had my ass handed to me the other day and spirit was like you need to stop being so distracted and that's when all the messages came in right so we need to be focused on remaining open to receive the messages that are required of us we need to be asking like what is the next step what is required of me rather than what is the whole thing and where is this going and how am I going to get there it's like no what is the next step what is it? if you can do nothing else that you take from this if you do nothing else that you've taken from this episode um, when it comes to trusting your intuition and leaning into the mystery, the biggest point I can make is you only need to have the next step, the next step. That's it. The next step. And that next step might be sitting and waiting for the next step, right? For the past two weeks, I've been asking, where am I meant to go? Where am I meant to go? Um, it's coming up to the end of the month. I need to like extend my rent here. Someone's going to book the room. I need to book a flight. If I'm going somewhere, where am I meant to go? And nothing was dropping in. Nothing was dropping in. And then this pyramid adventure dropped in. And it was like, after this pyramid adventure, you will know. And guys, the next step is actually for me to stay here because there's some more stuff that I have to do here that couldn't have been done until I'd went and received from this pyramid, right? So it's like, I couldn't have known that. If Spirit have said, just stay in Tulum, then I wouldn't have even gone to that first pyramid because I'd be like, oh, well, I'm just meant to be here and whatever, right? So it's sometimes we need that door to be unlocked before we receive the next step. And sometimes the energy is not optimal for us to receive that message. Sometimes we need to clear something. We need to integrate something. We're waiting for someone to fall in. We're waiting for connection points to be made. I had a session with a woman who I'm working with a lot on this mission. Like she's like my right-hand woman on this mission because it's fucking massive. And yes, I'm a very open and gifted channel. But honestly, when you get to this point and some of the things that I'm hearing and receiving, I'm like, actually, I trust this, but I also just want some backup here because it feels like this is too big for one person. Right. And it's not to say I'm Jesus and I'm fucking, I mean, it's not, I'm not saying any of that. I'm saying like this mission requires other people, which is what that invitation was at the start. Right. Anyway, I have this woman who's, she's like my map reader. And I say to her, blah, 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 this is what's dropped in. And then she'll fill in and say, yes, correct. Like I feel that too. Or she'll give me a piece that I've been missing, which is really important because again, like as a channel, as a human, we miss things sometimes, right? Spirit said to me through this woman, stop fucking distracting yourself. I didn't even realize I was distracting myself. I was like, I've been sitting here every day asking for the piece to drop in. But the moments that I've been sitting there, I've been with company. I've been you know, on a date with a boy that was cute. I've been doing things that like, I'm like, yeah, I'm open to receive the message, but I wasn't actually open to receive the message. So I needed to receive it through an objective, like external channel to say that to me. So I could be like, oh yeah, no, that's true. Because my guides had been saying it to me, but it wasn't coming through, right? Anyway, this woman has been supporting me. And um, she said to me on this call, like before I went to the pyramid, she's like, there's some connections that need to drop in before you're ready for the next step before you're ready to move. And I realized like the connections, it's not just people and things and timelines that ha are having to converge and people that are having to fall in. I have to go to this coffee shop to meet X, Y, Z person who then has a hookup for this person who's going to tell me this place. And then that's going to have a ping in my body. Like it's like literally following this fucking treasure map guys It's crazy. Um, but it's also the connections of when we're grid workers, right? And this is, whoa, this is such a, like a transmission for someone. It really is a process of, you go to one place, you receive codes from one place. Once you've received the codes from that place, 
then you will be shown the next place you need to go give those codes, right? So here it's like, I had to go to Chichen Itza to receive and to activate and to do whatever I did there, which is really big. And I don't want to like even go into that on this podcast episode. I had to do that to then actually come back here and bring those codes back here. So my next step is back here. It's not to go somewhere else. It's like, I had to go there first, come back here to receive some stuff here to share that transmission here, then to get the next point, which I feel like might be Guatemala. Let's see. Um, But it's like those connections had to be made first. So sometimes when we feel like we're sitting there, nothing is moving. We're not moving forward on our mission. We're not receiving the next step. It's because things have to fall in place. For instance, all of the containers that I run are 110% intuitively led. It's actually really challenging sometimes because you put something out there and you're sitting there being like, my intuition told me this, but there's no one dropping in. There's no one dropping in. And you're like, fuck, there's 10 days till this thing is supposed to start. And there's no one dropping in. Um, that's happened so many times, guys. In the three years or four years since I've been in this business, it's always like the last minute they all come in. And I've had to sit for two months of launch being like, I know I meant to do this, but the people haven't dropped in yet. And it's like, literally, I've had to wait for that person to be ready. I've had to wait for Mercury to go out of retrograde. So that person assimilated their lessons and the energy's right. And then we're on this portal when the thing's going to open, right? It's like when you're working in the metaphysical realm, there are so many different moving parts that have to come into place sometimes for that thing to go and lock into place. And then you get the step. So sometimes waiting for that next step is actually, that's exactly what you're meant to be doing. You're meant to be sitting in the unknown. You're meant to be sitting in the mystery. You're meant to be leaning back, waiting. Because if there's not that clear, this is what it is then you're forcing it, right? You will know, you know, in your body and you will tell yourself, oh, it's just a feeling. I'm imagining this, I'm making it up. But you know, in your body, you know it, you know it, you know it, you know it. And I get like, this is a message for someone you say and you think that you don't know it, but you know it, you know that feeling when your body lights up, you know that feeling when you feel pulled to something, you know that feeling when something is right for you, when you're meant to do something, right? You know it, you know what it feels like to feel inspired. These are all points of like what intuition what living in the mystery feels like, guys. You know what it feels like to have an aligned action because that action comes and it's like something takes you over and it's working through you. This is what it means to be a clear channel, right? To let that life force work through you and guide you and direct you to this is it, this is it, this is it, this is the thing. This is where I focus my energy. And that momentum comes, guys. And if that momentum isn't coming, and I've said this in other episodes, it's because that momentum is not ready. It's because the connection points haven't been made. It's because you're trying to force it because of various other things. So if you're feeling yourself forcing, pushing, shoving, not working, I've again said this in other episodes, I don't want to go into it. But like, if you feel yourself in that, I need to find it. I need to find it. I need to know the next step. I need to know. I need to know. That's your invitation to soften, lean back and chill out because it will come. Right. And we can't, it can't come if we're forcing it from our human mind of when it needs to happen. I have been shown certain things about my mission that are who knows when they are in the future, right? But I can see how big they are. And I'm like the number of things that would have to come in and like drop in and align for that to happen. There's no fucking way I can force that. There is no way. I personally, me, my human can go out and connect that person to that person who's then going to see my podcast and then message me and then invite me to do this. And then, oh, suddenly I'm doing this, right? Like, it's like, I cannot, um, I cannot, (laughs) begin to explain the number of things in my life that have happened that are so perfect, so beyond words, so mystical. Um, Like so many things had to happen for that to fall into place so effortlessly. (laughs) I couldn't have created that for myself. I could give you stories, guys. I could give you, I can give you like five stories from the past week of this happening, but I, I want, I want to use a really great example of two of my friends that I've met, right? So the first one is my, one of my girlfriends, Dana, who I've had on here, the way that I met her is like crazy wild. Um, We shared our little meet cute on our episode, but I'm going to share it again. I was living in Bali at the time and I was walking along the beach. And at the time I was a coach, I was broke. um, And I was calling in, I was trying to call in some writing work um, because I thought that's what I needed or required to stay in Bali. Anyway, walking along the beach and I hear it so fucking loudly and clearly in my brain, in my body, in everything, in my being, you need to go to this other beach, which was like, you have to walk up the thing. And it was like, a, it was an effort and I never go there. And I was like, what the fuck? That is so clear. Anyway, lo and behold, I go to this other part of the beach. I see my friend Adrian sitting there having a coconut and she's with this woman, Dana, who is now one of my best friends. And I sit down anyway, sitting there for an hour being like, I don't know why I'm here. I don't know the reason for me being here. I don't understand why I was guided to come here. And she starts talking and she says, do you guys happen to know anyone who is a coach that is also a writer because I'm hiring? (laughs) 
lo and behold, she ends up becoming my boss. We work together. She closes down her business. I take on all of her copywriting clients. My copywriting business starts. We then become best friends. We have huge initiations together. We run a fucking precess initiation thing together. We're still in contact. Like most, one of the most beautiful healing connections I've ever made in my life, right? That's just one story of like me trusting my intuition, receiving the download, taking the action. The other one is me, where I'm living, right? I have met one of my dear, and she's going to listen to this because she listens to this. I fucking love this woman. She's my best friend. Like I can say that. I've, well, I love you so much, Lisa. Um, I've never had a friend who it's like looking in a mirror and it's freaky sometimes. Like we freak each other out at how perfect we are for each other because we're the same person right there is like one thing that we don't have in common and it's that I don't like sitting in the direct sunlight for more than like an hour because I get too hot and I get tired and she can do it all day she's like a fucking lizard this woman um but this woman is like it's it's actually uncanny and crazy like you probably if you follow me on Instagram you've seen her in my stories we are like yin and yin like I didn't say yin and yang because we're both hyper feminine but we just fit like a fucking glove I've never had a soulmate in my life that fits the way that this woman fits me. And I like the things that had to happen for us to both arrive at the same place for me to book my accommodation where I'm staying with has the gym where I met her. And you know, when you meet someone like this in your life, that's meant to be your person, your intuition will tell you, you will feel something, you will feel a pull to them. I remember the day that I saw her first, she was in the gym. I was in the gym. I was checking her out. I was like, damn guys, I'm bisexual. So I check out women all the time, but I was like, that is a one fine looking woman. I really like her energy. I love her vibe. I love how she's like grunting and like making these fucking noises in the gym. I love how she's dancing. Like I really want to know her, but I just kind of kept to myself and didn't say anything. I had another friend who was a mutual friend of both of us say, Hey, I was out. I just met this other woman. And she was like, Hey, I have this woman that I feel like you really remind me of her. And I feel like you'd really like her. So I'm going to send you her number. Is that okay? Or I'm going to send her your number. And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, of course. This is when I was really calling in my sisters when I arrived here. Anyway, she sends the number to Lisa. Lisa messages me. I get the message. I look at the photo. I'm like, holy fuck, it's the girl. It's a girl that I have a crush on. So we end up hanging out and it's just instant. Like we have known each other for lifetimes. I love this woman. Like I spend every waking moment with this woman. It's borderline codependent guys. No, it's not but we are just so in sync. Like we are so in sync. We are enjoy every minute that we're together. We've supported each other through some shit. I've activated her. She's activated me. Our missions have now aligned where we both are now staying here um, because we were both going off in other places. We're talking about moving to the next place together after this. So it's like things are being orchestrated for you all of the time is a point that I'm trying to make, right? Things are being orchestrated for you all the time that you cannot see. And if you are not tapped into your intuition to receive that nudge, receive that download, receive that feeling in your body of like, fuck, I need to know this person or, oh my God, I just feel like I need to post this thing or write this email or whatever it is, you're going to miss that, right? We're given these opportunities all the time. It's not to say you're going to miss it forever and it's never going to come back because I believe what is meant for us is always going to find us in some way. Like we get these opportunities again. It's just like, you got to wait for it to come around again in some other way, right? There is no way me and Lisa are missing each other in this lifetime. Like there is no way. This shit is too good. It's too magical. Um, and particularly when you're running your business intuitively, like those people have to find you. They will find you. The people that are meant to be in your containers will find you, but you also need to be willing and open to receive the directive of, I need to write this specific post. I need to write this email. I need to reach out to this person, right? You will receive those, those, those messages, those guidelines, those um, intuitive hits when you're tapped in, right? And then it becomes effortless. People talk about being magnetic, it being effortless, it being magical. The universe just handing you, you know, miracles and magic. And that is my life. Really, it is my life. Like I'm in the flow where things just land in and I'm like, that is so fucking perfect and crazy. And I didn't have to work hard for that. And wow. But that requires me to take that action when it's presented to me. It requires me to do the uncomfortable things, guys. Getting on a plane and coming here with no fucking plan, with no money at the time. Like I was struggling financially. I had enough to get here and for my first month. And then I was like, let's just see what happens, right? <laughs> um, it's kind of a story that I've been unpacking. But I had no plan. I had no, I had no guidelines. I had no nothing. And I had to trust. It requires us to trust to trust that we're always supported. We're always taken care of. It requires us when we're doing these missions that are not physical, right? As a vision, as someone who is working in the non-physical realms as a grid worker, 
this is I'm speaking really specifically to grid workers, those who are like working with the earth, working with maybe you're working with spirit, maybe you're working with plants, maybe you are um, you're doing things and your missions is stuff that are like I had this conversation with this woman that I met out here the other day and we were talking about 2020 and how both of us felt that we were doing this work in our meditation in, our, in the astral realm that it didn't have any recognition in the physical realm for us, but we were fighting fucking literal battles every day. We were fighting these things. We both described to each other, the things that we were seeing and fighting in these astral projections, they were the same shit, right? We were doing portal work. We were doing energy work. We were doing all sorts of grid work. And in our daily waking life, there was no evidence for that being real. There was no evidence for, so I did this. And then there's a, as an instant correlation between something shifting in my physical, because it was so unseen, Right. And what I'm trying to say is like, if you have missions in the unseen realm, which most of you do because you're listening to this podcast and I call in a very specific kind of person, guys, because <laughs> I'm kind of fucking nuts. Um, you will not see the evidence of some of this stuff, which makes you kind of feel a bit nuts. Like when I'm at a pyramid and they're saying, you're unlocking this thing and you're bringing back these codes and you're a custodian of this thing and you have this grid work mission and blah, 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 all this stuff. I'm like, this feels like a big old fantasy in my head of some Indiana Jones shit, some like never ending story, um, fantasy land. I'm now playing with aliens in space and it's a movie and it's not real. Um, when you're in that, right? Like as a kid, how we used to play and we'd have this make-believe thing and we would create spells and, you know, imagine things. That's what it feels like. It feels like imaginary. Um, but you need to trust that like when you're being guided to do something, when you're being guided, Hey, you need to go to this place. You need to take this crystal, put it in the land there. You need to say this mantra. You need to meditate. You need to move your hands in a certain way. You need to trust that because you're not going to get the validation from the real world. A lot of the time, sometimes at the start of the journey, and this is what was happening for me, God, my higher self, my spirit team were finding ways to validate that for me. So I would find like, so for instance, guys, I would have a huge download. I would channel some stuff about like our alien lineage or like, so recently, for instance, I have been channeling so much stuff about the Mayans. I haven't read anything about the Mayans. I feel kind of low key disrespectful because I haven't done my research and I'm out here claiming I have these Mayan codes, but it's proved to me that they're legit because everything that I've channeled, I've then gone and found a book like two days later, which he's saying all the same stuff, all the things that I've channeled, the tour guide is telling me about this civilization, about these people, about what their purpose was, about you know how they worship the sun and what that significance was and how they're here to bring things into flow and alignment and what happened to them, did they leave? Guys, I didn't even know that <laughs> most of the Mayans had left until I channeled that. And then after I channeled that, I kept hearing that. So what I'm trying to say is like, you will receive confirmation sometimes after the fact, but you need to trust that because some of the things that you will hear are gonna be wild, particularly if you're working with mythical animals or like creatures like aliens like mermaids like dragons like different energies um different beings different frequencies you are going to think that you're fucking nuts the first kind of little while until you get used to this stuff and this is what happened to me guys i remember when i used to channel um the first kind of beings that I was working with. I was working a lot with Kalima and I was working a lot with the ancestors because for me, that was tangible. It was like, okay, this is like stretching my, stretching myself a little bit, but I can believe that I'm working with elemental astro, like uh, ancestral energy. I can believe that. I can believe I'm working with Kalima because I've experienced her in this tangible way. Fast forward a couple months, aliens start coming through. All this alien galactic connection stuff starts coming through. I start really heavily doubting that. I start being like, this can't be real. This goes against anything that I, everything that I believe. And it's a process of over years, practicing, discerning, who am I talking to, right? When you have an open channel, all of them can flood in all at once and you have no fucking clue who you're talking to. For me, it comes through in my own voice. So yes, while I might be channeling the Mayans, I might be channeling Kalima, I might be channeling the Syrian people, I might be channeling this and that and whoever, it's my own voice. It's one voice. It's source. I'm really, I'm channeling source. And then all of these things that come in are fractals of source. So the most pure thing that you can have in your connection is a connection to source because source is above. Like if you want to talk about, and this is a weird place that they're taking me, but like when we talk about the different levels of beings that you can connect with, there is us, right? There is a human. Then there's our higher self. And then there are beings who are like 4D and above. So they're, they're not in physical, um, 
like not in the physical dimension, but they have light bodies. They're at a higher frequency. These are maybe galactic beings. Then you go a bit higher. They're more like goddess energies, deities, that sort of thing. Then you go a bit higher again. There's the archangels. Then you go a bit higher and it's source, <laughs> right? And somewhere in there uh, around your higher, um, your higher self is like your oversoul network. So all of the connections that you have across all different lifetimes, the different souls you're connected to. It's like this massive network of everything. If you can clear your channel to a point where you connect into source, then you will understand which fractal is net. This is really important for someone. I don't know why you need to hear this. You will understand which fractal is the most important for you to connect to, to connect to in that moment, because that fractal has a flavor. It has a frequency. So for instance, when I'm working, sorry about the weird noises today, guys, I just really, there are certain fractals which are required at any given moment and you need to be able to discern which fractal which flavor which frequency is necessary and that's what all these different beings are they have different flavors so a different galactic race will have a different flavor like i'm going to work with the syrians because i know that they do lots of pyramid work they're really grounding i'm going to work with the lyrans because X, Y, Z reason, whatever reason. I've done many episodes about this. There's some really great light worker ones. Actually, there's one coming up. Next episode will be one about different galactic races. So I'll be sure to drop that one ASAP. Um, in fact, I might do a double drop this week. Who knows? I'm feeling freaky um, with Aaron. And I had his partner Ria on earlier talking about this stuff, but they have different frequencies, different reasons, different um, flavors, right? For, for you to connect to. And, oh, okay. I understand when I need to drop that. That's making sense. Cool. Um, don't mind me just having a little conversation with my higher self. You will know in that moment when that's coming through and you'll be able to discern because it's like when we open up our channel, they all come flooding in and it's like, this is too fucking much. This is overwhelming. I don't know who to connect to. I don't know who it is that's speaking to me. I've got all of them coming in at once and I can't decide or discern which one is the most important. That's when your masculine comes in, guys. This is a whole other thing, but this is when your ability to like tune in and be like, this is the priority, right? That that's really important when you're a channel to have that masculine discernment piece, but there's a reason to connect with different frequencies at different times. Um, this is something I'll be teaching in my upcoming container psychic as fuck to help you really re refine and down, like fine tune and discern who is important for me to be connecting to who is it that I'm connecting to. Right. Because for many of you, like me, it might just be a voice in your head. You don't even, you have an awareness that you're working with these beings. You're struggling to trust that. And that's the other thing for me, I had to have that confirmed for me so many times because it was so unseen and so unfamiliar that I had to have other mentors and teachers and you know, psychic friends confirming that stuff for me to be like, yes, really, truly you are actually connecting to the Syrians. And this really is what they're saying, right? Like some, we need that validation at the start, but that validation can also sometimes be used against us. Someone is delivering my groceries. Give me one second. Sorry about that guys. Back again, just a guy delivering my groceries. <laughs> It's always perfect. That's the other thing that I want to say, guys. It is always perfect. If something weird happens, if you get an interruption in the middle of something, I feel like whatever I was just talking about, that tangent was not meant to happen because old mate is delivering my groceries now. For, for instance, the other day, my scooter didn't start. And that was annoying at the time it happened because I needed to go somewhere. But actually, I saw later why my scooter didn't start and actually how it was a blessing, right? So some sometimes things happen and they seem like a really shit thing at the time, but there's a blessing in it. And if you trust, if you trust your intuition, you know, and you know how to tell and feel and sense when that's a redirection and it's a redirection for a reason. I could go into like thousands of stories about that. And even through COVID, like so many wild fucking things had to happen for me to wind up in Mexico last time, like me getting COVID, me not being able to get on the plane to go home things dropping in, like rah, 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 all these crazy things um, that ended up bringing me here. But this is what it means to lean into the mystery. So like when something goes to shit, be like, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder why I'm not meant to go there. Or, oh, that's interesting. I wonder what's like coming instead, instead of trying to figure out what did I do? Why isn't this working, right? It's like leaning into the mystery. Back to my previous point, before I got distracted by my delivery man, we, it's important for us at the start to have those checks because we need them to confirm, Hey, I'm not fucking nuts, but relying on them, relying on other people, confirming things for us, relying on X, Y, Z teacher saying, yeah, you're really connecting to these beings, whatever that is actually can get to a point where it's, it's harmful for us because then we're putting our power outside of us. Right. So in psychic as fuck, I don't want to do that for you. I want to take you. I want to help you connect to them yourselves. I want to confirm that for you. But the idea is that by the end of that 
experience with me, you will be self um, sustained. You will be confirming it for yourself. You won't need someone to, to validate you in anything that you're experiencing, because that's the thing about the metaphysical world. Like we're not going to get that validation a lot of the time. Right. I don't get that validation a lot of the time with some of this stuff that I'm doing out here. I just need to fucking trust. Um, and that is, it's a complicated way to live life sometimes, but it's also so beautiful because it's like, well, I trust, like, even if, even if, and I've said this before, but even if this is all fucking nuts and I'm not really activating pyramids and I'm not really channeling my own stuff and I'm not really on this big mission that is so powerful and incredible and amazing, does it really matter? I'm having a good time and my life is feeling really blessed right now and I'm enjoying myself. So what's, you know, what's the harm in me going and playing a little Harry Potter at a pyramid <laughs> I'm kidding. It's, 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 it's totally real. Yeah, it's real. Um, but you won't know, like we'll never know. Right. So I'm going to wrap this episode up. I hope that's giving you some things to like feel into because it's a wild, wild trip, right? It's a wild trip. Life is a journey. Life is an adventure. Life is a mystery. And we can push against that and try and have control, or we can just let go of fucking control and allow ourselves to be guided. And it's so magical that way. So saying all of that, there are two ways right now, um, to engage in this experience with me. So one is psychic as fuck is starting next week. That is an intuition, psychic development, channeling container in this container. I'm going to get you guys to the point where you're going to get yourselves. I'm going to guide you to get to the point where you live like me, <laughs> right? It is ballsy to live like this or over easy. -easy. Don't want to be gender specific there. It takes like some serious trust to live this way, to trust your intuition, to be guided by it every day. We all have variations of the same mission that I have, different missions, different things to experience. And when you can trust, they present themselves. So in this container, I'll be teaching you how to channel or helping you to remember how to channel. I'll be helping you to clear your channel. I'll be helping you to discern who the fuck am I channeling, connect to your different races, your beings, your galactic star families, your soul family, your higher self, your dragon friends, whatever it is that you are here to connect with. I'm going to help you, right? I am, my gift is I have a very big network <laughs> that I tap into that has all these different beings. So I know when I'm working with someone, this is the being that they're here to work with. And I connect you guys. And it's like, yo, here's your friend. Here's your buddy. Now you can talk to them. I'm a bridge for spirit, right? In that way, which is why I don't have one specific other than the minds. I'm really like really feeling that at the moment. But I don't have just one specific race that I connect to. I connect to lots of them because it's to facilitate I'm working with a lot of different people who are a lot of different starseed races and a lot of different connection points, right? Different ancestral lineages. So I need to be able to connect you to them. So that's what this is. I'm going to help you connect you, help connect you to your people. I'm going to help you to protect, to shield. I actually had a technology dropped in this morning that I'm going to share in this container, which is a, it's a really fucking cool way to clean and, um, cleanse your energy. I learned it this morning and I'm like, whoa, that's really fucking powerful. It's like this cyclone thing. I'm not going to get into it, but it's stuff like that. I'll be sharing technologies with you guys to support you in your process, to shield, to clear, to keep your energy pure. I'll be teaching you about energetic hygiene. It's so fucking important when you're a sensitive in your channel, um, teaching you about some of the beings you might come across, teaching you about the different types of energy, teaching you how to open and close sacred space, helping you to validate, um, you know, your channeling as it comes through, teaching you how it feels. Some of us don't even know what our intuition feels like, how that comes through. So I'll be helping you to discern and identify what way it comes through for you. The other thing is something else. There is something else. There'll be drills. There'll be exercises. There'll be things for you to go away and take. But guys, I'm an activator, right? Like if you don't know this about me already, I'm an activator. You're going to get fucking activated in this container. You say yes to this container. You come into this container. You will have your faculties turned on. There's no, there's no other way. There's no way you're coming into that container and you're not going to feel more tapped in. And why do we do this, guys? Well, firstly, everything I said in this episode, but secondly, because intuition is the key to everything that we desire to create, right? When we're intuitive, it's also a really great way to say sovereign. When we're intuitive, when we're tapped in, when we're psychic as fuck, we know a fuck no when we feel it. We know when someone's not legit. We know when something is not true. We know when someone's not embodied. We see through the veil and we're very hard to control. Really important, right? The second, wow. Okay. The energy is already coming through for this one. Guys, for the second one, it's only going to appeal to like five, six people, right? Like that's how small, <laughs> This is so actually, if you're not feeling the call, feel free to stop listening to this episode because this is not for you. But there are five or six of you who listen to my podcast or you're, you're in my vortex. or Maybe you're my friend. You're meant to come on this mission with me. Um, 
Ah, wow, it's so exciting. So what I'm doing and the details, again, it's like, this is a full trust. If you feel that this is you, you will know you were mission to this. You're here to help me do this mission. You're here to help receive from the land. So what it will be is it's really loose. It's really open. It's a monthly membership, but it is a transmission. Um, you will receive all the upgrades as I'm going to these sacred places. You'll receive all this Mayan stuff that I've been, it's huge. It's fucking massive. This is not for someone who's a, a beginner. This is very advanced stuff. And that's, again, I'm not pedestaling or like, you can't join our club. It's not that it's more just like, this won't resonate with you if you're not at a level where you can understand and receive this. And that's, that's simple. That's all it is because those who are coming into this experience also have, it's a mission, right? Like they are mission souls. We're here to do this together. This is not just my mission. This is your mission too. I'm leading it. I'm facilitating it. I'm guiding it. But everything that you receive in your own channel for yourself, the upgrades, the light body upgrades, the harmonizations, they're really big. It's really big energies, guys. Like it's knocking me and my friend out. Like it's really knocking us out because she's been with me for a lot of this. Um, really fucking big stuff. So You'll be receiving all of those attunements and then you will be guided to do your own practice in your, where you are in the world. And there's like this big grid work we are creating through this process. You will know if this is you, that's all I'm saying. Please send me a DM if this is um, landing for you, trust yourself. I mean, I don't need to say this to you because I feel like you're already advanced enough to know, but this is for you, message me. And this is going to continue until this mission is over, right? It's going to be a monthly thing that happens until I have activated every pyramid that I'm here to fucking activate in the Southern part of this, this part of the map. So that is my episode for today. I apologize for being a little bit all over the place. I really hope that you get what you need from this episode. Um, all of you, you learn how to like lean into the mystery because really, truly it is such a beautiful way to live. And I want everyone to be able to experience that. So that is my episode. Check out Psychic as Fuck if you want to learn how to do this or remember how to do this. I love you. I love you. Love you. Until next time, beautiful souls. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Cracked Open. Don't forget to hit subscribe and share with a friend if this episode has served you in any way. For more information about the work that I do or to get in touch with me, read the show notes or head to beckmylonis.com. Until next time, beautiful soul.